Welcome back. I have just finished up my first week, or first half a week, working with the Grounded Few. Uh, I am not really sure as to what my exact role will be yet. It sounds as though we're kind of piecing it together as we go along, but I'm looking forward to see where it goes. Uh, but I can't really report too much about that yet, as I don't have that much to report. However, I do want to talk about my plans for this summer, as my summer is going to consist of two main things. My work with the Grounded Few, and my summer thesis. I don't even know why I said summer thesis, it's my senior thesis. <clears throat> so what is my senior thesis? My senior thesis, as far as grad school goes, is this big project, research project, that I have to do that will act as my big final paper. And it is going to be what I'm going to take away with me as my piece of material when I leave this program. So I want it to be good, I want to be proud of it, I want it to be clear, concise, and I want it to make sense. So this is going to be my first attempt at trying to explain what my senior thesis is about to people who are not involved in the communication realm. So, parasocial relationships. I've talked about them on this, whatever you want to call this, before. And parasocial relationships are the relationships, or one-way relationships, that a viewer has with a persona on, in, within the media. So media can include television, it could be a writer on a newspaper, a character on a TV show, a character on a movie, a radio show host, a podcast host, whatever. If it exists in media and there's a way for the personality to come through, then it can be considered a parasocial relationship. But parasocial relationships are considered one-way relationships. And what does that mean? It means that the viewer engages in that relationship with the persona, but the persona, who is, we'll use television in this case, who is a television show character, does not engage back with the viewer. It's a one-sided relationship because, of course, the TV persona has no idea the viewer even exists. So, that is the parasocial relationship real quick. Now, a parasocial breakup is when a parasocial relationship is terminated or it ceases to exist. But parasocial breakups can happen in more than one way. A parasocial breakup could happen by a writer leaving the show, and thus the character is no longer that same character. They change with the new writer. The parasocial breakup could be a character dies within the realm of the show. A character dies on the show and ceases to exist within that show. That would mandate a parasocial breakup. A character could make a moral decision that completely goes against the moral compass that you felt they had and thus breaks the trust between that character and the viewer. Uh, there's a whole myriad of ways in which a parasocial breakup can occur. Uh, another way that it can occur is if the show is taken off air suddenly. Uh, fans are devastated. Again, that character no longer exists and therefore the parasocial breakup has been initiated. Now, people have been shown, and research has shown, that people demonstrate um, signs of grief when it comes to parasocial breakups. We actually see people go through variations of the stages of grief when they go through a parasocial breakup that is significant to them for one reason or another. So my thesis is centered around parasocial breakups and whether or not different parasocial breakup circumstances bring about different grieving processes. So another way of putting that is I am arguing that a parasocial breakup involving a show being canceled will bring about a different grieving process and grieving strategy than a parasocial breakup where the favorite character died or was killed or murdered. That'll bring about a different grieving strategy. And right now, all of those terms are under one big parasocial breakup umbrella. But if I do this right and I do this correctly, I will have different terms for different parasocial breakups under different contexts. Because why would you have the same term if it's bringing about a different reaction or a more severe reaction, if you will? Uh, but this is all stuff that I'm going to dive into. Again, I'm going to be jumping into the literature and surrounding myself in a whole bunch of parasocial research. So expect to hear a lot more from parasocial interaction, parasocial relationships, parasocial breakups, etc. Um, I need to have a 35-page proposal by the end of the summer. So I have a lot of reading to do and a lot of writing to do and therefore a lot of attempts at explanation. So stay tuned. Okay. Till next time.